Spring is upon us again here in Texas. And one thing that I noticed every spring is we have to deal with lice. Lice is never something that somebody wants to deal with, but every year we have the same issue. With these cows right here, it's important to make sure that we take care of them because the thing about lice is the fact that it will actually impact the weight of the cow. So if they're beef cows, you gotta be careful of that. If they are mamas and they are producing milk, you have to take that into consideration. And so one of the things that I look for with the cows is for them to have this constant rubbing, this pushing against fences. And you'll notice a lot of hair that is kind of left behind on barb uh, because when you're itching like that, I mean, what feels better than some sharp barb just really digging in deep? I could only imagine. I've never had lice. It's very similar from what I've read to what humans deal with. Uh, but these little guys right here and big girls are dealing with the same thing. Lice is one of those things that is shared among the herd that no matter what breeds they are, no matter what it is, they are able to pass that from cow to cow. Now here's the thing, that sometimes here on the farm, we have neighbors and if they have cows that have lice, then they're coming over on our side as well. So that's why it's really important to make sure that you're taking care of your animals and most importantly, make sure that you know what you're looking for. While we're getting them up to the corral, we're going to be doing a couple things today. One, we're going to be checking them for lice. We're going to be treating them. So even if they don't really show symptoms of having lice, they're getting treated. Because as I said, it's shared among the herd. So they got to go, all of them. Every one of them is going to go through the chute or up into the squeeze area where I just can drench them with what needs to be put on them. So that's one thing. The other thing is that we've recently had some pink eye in the herd, which is also shared. So that's another thing that we're working on. And this one back here in particular, I need to check the eye patch that I put on her and I will show you what it looks like now and also put up another video a short to show you how we took care of her. First, I'm gonna get the cows up into the corral as I've showed numerous times. The handy dandy bucket with the cubes in it. And you'll see just me walking out here, they've already taken interest. Look, I haven't even shaken the bucket yet, one time. And this is why it's important to tra train your cattle on cattle cubes. Let's see, watch. Look, here they all come. Now I don't have to worry about trying to chase them. I don't have to get on a horse, don't have to get a four wheeler, don't have to get my dogs to chase them. Every one of them are gonna follow me and do exactly what I need them to do. Now, the problem is sometimes you got crazy ones like this, old crazy horn. She's not too, scra too scared of anything, so, which is a little bit nerve wracking, to be honest with you, out here, especially with the camera, excuse me while. Sorry for the bad angles, but it is a little bit nervous. A little nerve wracking here. Doing, all right, back off. Look at that. So I'm trying to keep them at arm's length for just a minute. I'm trying to get the rest of the herd up here. Okay. You always have these stragglers all the way back in the back. So I'm trying to be mindful of that. So you want to make sure that you have a good balance between, between them being friendly and overly friendly. If the cows are overly friendly, the problem is they'll bump into you, they'll push you. And remember, these are thousand pound plus animals that will very easily take any of us out. So I try to be mindful and walk that fine line of letting them follow me, opposed to letting them be my best friend and pet on them and then they run me over and hurt me or the kids or something like that. So. Next step is we're gonna go ahead 
and get them into the corral. If I can get all of them in the far side of the corral, then I can close them down. And that's really how you want to control your cows is you want to get them into the smallest space you can and then you'll have the greatest control. So now I got to get them over here to trust me. So I'm going to take these cattle cubes and excuse the camera work again as I go out the gate as this maniac is trying to follow me. Oh shoot, they outsmarted me. They outsmarted me. So I'm actually gonna go back in because there's a couple. Right now I'm like Dr. Doolittle. I got all the cows following me. So I gotta get two that are back there. I don't know if you can see them. I'm gonna be very careful with the bull because he is very big. And now I'm like defeating myself. So, all right, well, that was a dumb move too. So I'm just gonna go ahead and that's what I'm talking about. So the bulls are not afraid. All right, here we go. Come on. All right, I'm gonna dump them out because I got them where I want them for the most part. There they are. Toss the bucket over. All right, let me put the camera down for just a second because I gotta get them ones back there over to here where I am. I need to get Titus out here and help me with this part. I right, grab the stuff, Jacob. One of the things you really want to take in consideration is check in with your vet. Your local vet will give you what you need. But also you want to be really mindful of what it's specified for. So these pour-ons will indicate whether or not it is for lactating moms, if it's not, if there's any kind of withdrawal period, if you're going to go to the process. Uh, so all that information is in here. So just take time to read exactly what you're trying to treat. So there's two ways that we can do this. If you have really nice cows, you can walk up next to them and you just pour this over them. And what you're gonna do is it's just a little bit of an amount and you're gonna put it right between their shoulder blades. That way they can't lick it. And you also wanna make sure that you're being mindful of whether or not you're gonna have rain. Because if you're gonna have a lot of rain coming up, you don't wanna do that. So wait until after the rain passes, then go ahead and put this on. So if you don't have cows that are nice and you can walk up to them, then we're gonna do this process where we put them in this area or we'll put them in the squeeze chute. It just depends on how close I can get to them or how well behaved they are. So we'll go ahead and give this a shot, uh, pouring this on. You got three and bigs. Once I get the one, cause I, the one that has pink eye, we're gonna check her, but we're also gonna look for the lice and I will show you exactly what I'm looking for outside of just their normal behavior. So this is a, very calm cow that we just recently obtained. And you're gonna see right here, you got a good shot? Yep. I'm just gonna pour it right on there like that. It doesn't hurt them. And if, again, if you have well-behaved cows, they're gonna be more than happy for you yep. to do this because this is gonna make them feel a lot better. So what I'm gonna do is actually reach across to the young one while she's not watching. Because she's never had that happen. Because she's never had this port, and it's a weird feeling for them. And a lot of times, cows will kind of pick up the behavior of everything around them. So if everything is calm, then they'll remain calm. Eleanor is a seasoned girl. This is Eleanor right here. Titus is loud in the gym today. Jacob, hold Titus, okay? Get Titus back. Get Titus, Jacob. Actually, hold him. Because this is Charlotte. Here you go. Okay, so successful so far. So we'll go ahead and open up the this area and let all of them out. That way it's less for me to have to deal with. 
So normally when you deal with cows, you want to put them together. They'll, they'll behave better if they work in packs or pairs or a herd. So the larger number you can get together, the better off you'll be. This right here is Libby and she is a good girl. I'm going to try to show you what I'm looking for when it comes to lice. You see how she's losing her hair here. So that's some of the signs you're wanting to look for. Uh, in addition to them trying to rub on everything, you'll see that their face will actually start to drop sometimes when they really haven't been treated for a while. It can damage their hair. If you're gonna take that in consideration, if you're gonna take the hide and do something with it. But let me give you one. Like every angle is. Hi, baby. This is all bald. All that's bald. And so again, all the eggs and stuff from lice is at the base of the hair. So this one is the one that we treated for pink eye. <laughs> that's why she's got her pirate patch. And so while she's here, I wanna go ahead and look at her eye. And the good thing about recording this is I can always pull it up later because she's gonna stay on the pasture here at the ranch. And she's got a little puffiness still, but it's a lot better than what it was. Okay, so we had some issues with getting the bull. Can you get Titus? Sometimes, what's the old saying? It's What's the old saying? You can attract more bees with honey? Or... All right. Whatever the saying is, you can attract more bees with honey than vinegar. So what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna try. He's interested. He's a bull, so he's not too, too terribly scared. I'm gonna to try to get up next to him. Hey, you look at the camera, buddy. Okay, I don't trust bulls. I never trust bulls because they're not afraid. This is another example of what lice looks like on the cows. This is Solomon the bull. And after I put some treatment on him, I decided to pull the camera around to show you his hind end because I didn't realize it was quite that bad. As I mentioned, what you really wanna look for is look for them to continually be rubbing on things. It could be anything. It could be soft round wire, it could be it could be corral panels, it could be barbed wire. They don't care what it is. They're just scratching because they're itching. And you wanna watch that. You wanna watch their head behavior if it starts drooping. If it goes untreated for a period of time, it could impact their body weight, uh, their productivity if they're mamas. So it's really important to make sure you're taking good care of them. And that's also why it's important to make sure that you handle these cows as much as you can without making them your good friends where they're constantly up in you, but just where they trust you. Because when they trust you, you can walk up to them. You can do the things you want to do. And hey, who likes good, healthy cows? Farmers do.